Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories. Indian PM Modi inaugurates Ames Hospital, attends Kulu Dashera in Himachal Pradesh. Pakistan out of money for flood recovery, says Climate Minister as UN boost aid request. And Hindus in India celebrate Durga Puja and the Shera festival with fervor. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday inaugurated the All India Institute of Medical Sciences in Bilaspur in Himachal Pradesh state and launched several developmental projects. He said the premier hospital will not only increase access to affordable health care in the hill state, but is also eco-friendly and will be known as Green Ames. Later in the day, he also took part in the famous Dashera celebrations in Kullu district. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday inaugurated the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Ames, in Bilaspur district of northern Himachal Pradesh state. PM Modi affirmed that the hospital will run in an environment-friendly manner and will also be known as Green Hospital. He announced that Himachal is one of the three states chosen for establishing bulk drugs park that will ensure the access to affordable medicines in India. Sounding the poll bugle in the election-bound hill state, the Prime Minister said it is the strength of the vote of the people which had made unprecedented development possible in Himachal Pradesh through the double-engine BJP governments at the centre and the state. He also inaugurated several other developmental projects in the state and touched upon medical tourism as a potential sector during an address to a huge public gathering. When the country and the world want to come to the hindustan, the prakritik sundari is so big that they will come here एक प्रकार के उनके लिए आरोग्य का लाभ भी होगा और पर्यटन का भी लाभ होने वाला है। Later in the day, the Prime Minister attended the famous international Kullu Dashera event in Himachal Pradesh and witnessed the unique chariot processions of more than 300 deities. He became the first Prime Minister to attend the historical event. The highlight of the week-long festival is cultural and dance programs held every day and thousands of tourists flock the hill town to witness the centuries-old celebrations. Security forces on Wednesday neutralized four terrorists affiliated to Pakistan-based terror outfits in two separate encounters in Shopian in India's Jammu and Kashmir. This came amid stepped-up security in the wake of Interior Minister Amit Shah's visit to the Union Territory. Four terrorists were neutralized in twin encounters in Shopian district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Wednesday, even as security was stepped up in the Union territory in the wake of Interior Minister Amit Shah's visit. The police said three local terrorists affiliated to Pakistan-based Jaish e Mohammed outfit were neutralized during the anti-militancy operations in Trach area, while another terrorist belonging to Lashkar-e Taiba outfit was gunned down in Mulu area in Shopian. Operations were still underway in the district till the last reports came in. Additional Director General of Police Vijay Kumar said the slain terrorists in Draj were involved in killing of policemen Javed Dar and a labourer from West Bengal. This came after five JEM terrorists were gunned down in similar encounters in Kulgam and Baramulla districts last week. Meanwhile, Interior Minister Amit Shah on Wednesday chaired a high-level meeting to review the security situation in Jammu and Kashmir. He also addressed a public rally in Baramulla district and laid foundation stone for several development projects in the Union Territory. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's climate minister on Tuesday said that the South Asian nation is out of funds to spend on recovery from the devastating floods, urging international help at the UN launch of an aid appeal in Geneva. She said the country has no space to give economy a stimulus package 
which would create jobs and provide people with the sustainable incomes. Pakistan's climate minister Sheri Rehman said on Tuesday that the country is out of money to spend on recovery from devastating floods and urged international help at the UN launch of an aid Thank appeal in much. Geneva. Um, Rehman said Excellency that the country has no space to give economy a stimulus package which would create jobs and, and provide people with sustainable the incomes they need. She urged the developed world to accelerate funding for the ongoing domestic climate-linked disaster terming it the meta-climate event of a century. She added Pakistan has already dispersed cash handouts worth 264 million US dollars to 2.47 million people affected by the disaster. This is the meta-climate event of the century, crossing all records for the whole world, not just for Pakistan. We've been looking for research that tells us <coughs> where so many millions have been affected at one time and where so much ground has been covered. The scale of the catastrophe, as you saw, is more than existential. It is now a Rubicon crossed for all climate disasters. The United Nations revised up its humanitarian aid appeal for Pakistan fivefold to 816 million US dollars from 160 million US dollars as a surge of waterborne diseases and fear of growing hunger pose new dangers after weeks of unprecedented flooding that has killed nearly 1700. The meeting was told that the UN has received only 90 million US dollars so far out of the 160 million US dollars previous appeal for aid. Moving on, Kashmiri activists highlighted the plight of the victims of cross border terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir, especially women, at a UNHRC event in Geneva this week. They highlighted various incidents of involuntary labor and sexual violence by terrorists aided by Pakistan. Kashmiri activists highlighted the plight of the victims of cross-border terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir, especially women, at an event on the sidelines of the UNHRC session in Geneva this week. They raised concerns that women victims have remained unacknowledged due to social pressures and constant threats to their lives. They said there have been numerous incidents of involuntary labor and sexual violence by terrorists aided by Pakistan with the sole motive of creating terror in the minds of people in the region. Kashmiris can no longer afford these injustices, they said, and urged the international community to investigate to keep such activities in check. The victims include those killed on the suspicion of being informants, hostage, counterinsurgency operation and mostly important women who face multiple forms of exploitation. It is even more challenging for, a, for the woman victim to speak about exploitation and sexual abuse due to fear of social pressure and threats from terrorist groups. Also, as women, identities are synonymous with those of the male heads of the family. Due to the nature of our society, it becomes impossible to rebuild a life in the aftermath of the loss of male family member. India has also long blamed that Pakistan aids and infiltrate terrorists across the border to spread unrest in its Kashmir Valley. Infiltration and smuggling of narcotics and weapons across the border have been matters of constant concern to all agencies manning the borders. In news from Afghanistan, Save the Children, a non-government organization in a report released this week has ranked Afghanistan among top countries at extreme risk of ongoing and future crisis disrupting education. The report states the children in the country are also more vulnerable to hunger, violence, abuse and child labour. A non-government organisation, Save the Children, in a report released this week has ranked Afghanistan among top countries at extreme risk of ongoing and future crisis disrupting education. According to the report, the education of millions of children in Afghanistan is at extreme risk of collapse as there is lack of digital connectivity that is derailing children's learning. Afghanistan was found to have the highest level of risk, up from fourth place in 2021, which concludes that the education system in the country has worsened since the Taliban gained control over a year ago, 
which has jeopardized children's future, particularly girls. Children out of school tend to find it harder to catch up on lost learning. They are also more vulnerable to hunger, violence, abuse, child labor and child marriage in refugee camps and war zones, the report states. In March, the Taliban made a U-turn on a promise to open girls' high schools and thousands of women have been pushed out of the workforce because of tighter restrictions and Afghanistan's economic crisis. The Taliban say that since March, they have been working on a way of opening girls' high schools in accordance with their interpretation of Islamic law. The international community has made ensuring human rights, especially rights of girls and women, as key demands for any future recognition of the Taliban administration. Afghanistan's assets, which have remained frozen due to sanctions, have severely hampered banking, business and development leading to greater insecurity, poverty and isolation. Sri Lanka's tourism minister informed the parliament that the government will be introducing a fuel pass to foreign visitors with effect from Wednesday so that tourists can refuel from any filling station. The island nation has been reeling under a major economic crisis that has created acute shortages of food, fuel and medical supplies. Sri Lanka's Tourism Minister Harin Fernando said that the island nation is planning to introduce a fuel pass for foreign travellers visiting Sri Lanka and it will be in effect from Wednesday. Speaking during a parliament session, Fernando said the Tourism Ministry in coordination with Power and Energy Ministry will issue the new fuel pass system for tourists. Foreigners will be able to refuel from any filling station, he added. Dwindling foreign exchange reserves to fund imports have intensified Sri Lanka's crisis, causing acute shortages of food, fuel and medical supplies and the further blowout in the cost of living. The government had introduced the National Fuel Pass QR code system in August to disperse fuel supplies to the public. The country's economy shrank 8.4% in the quarter through June from a year ago in one of the steepest declines seen in a three-month period amid fertilizer and fuel shortages. The island nation entered into a staff-level agreement with the International Monetary Fund last month for a 2.9 billion US dollars bailout but has to figure out how to restructure its heavy debt load before funds can be dispersed. Women across India participated in Sindur Khela or Vermilion ceremony to mark the conclusion of the Hindu festival of Durga Puja. It is believed that the ceremony is an expression to bid farewell to Goddess Durga who is worshipped during this time at homes and special congregations. Hindu women in India's West Bengal state celebrated Sindur Khela or Vermilion ceremony to mark the conclusion of Durga Puja festival dedicated to Goddess Durga. Dressed up in ethnic red and white Bengali sarees, women offered vermilion at the feet of the idols of the goddess and then smeared each other with vermilion, wishing long life for their husbands and peace and prosperity in the society. It is believed that the ceremony is an expression to bid farewell to Goddess Durga who is worshipped during this time at homes and at special congregations. I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed The annual four-day long festivities of Durga Puja mark the victory of Goddess of Power Durga over the evil buffalo demon king Mahishasur. The festivities conclude with the immersion of her idols in water bodies as devotees bid farewell to the warrior goddess. We have been playing this for generations now. My grandmother, my great grandmother have been playing this for the happiness and prosperity of the family, of our husbands, of our you know, everyone in the family. This is all for them that we are playing. Durga represents power, the feminine force which guides and destroys all the evil from the earth. Elsewhere, the occasion is also marked as Deshera, the day when Hindu Lord Rama defeated demon king Ravana and rescued his abducted wife Sita. People across the country burn effigies of Ravana to mark the victory of good over evil. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.